He's created Berkshire from virtually nothing into hundreds of billions of dollars of market cap. Nobody else has a record like that. He wanted to have an outstanding reputation that he never really upset the apple cart when he bought a business, but he kept the management in place. He was establishing a reputation that paid off later in life. It's been building and building ever since I've known him. It takes 20 years to build a reputation, and it takes five minutes to lose it. When Warren made his investment in Solomon, I was uh, one of the people, along with many, many others, who were quite amazed because he had taken a very critical tone in talking about investment bankers and about their greed. And here he was investing in one, Solomon Brothers, that was known to be a member of the club. Warren and Charlie went on the board, and Charlie couldn't stand what was going on there and didn't like the culture at all. And uh, shortly after they got involved, the thing exploded. In 1991, on a terrible day in August, I got a call, and the two top officers of Solomon were on the other end, and they said that, that uh, you know, we had a problem. This is NBC Nightly News. Good evening. It is the kind of scandal that rocks Wall Street and raises questions, questions about the integrity of our financial institutions. With the giant securities firm of Solomon Brothers under investigation for improper trading of treasury bonds. Solomon admitted it exceeded the limit of trading in government bonds. Once by buying bonds in the name of a customer who didn't even know about the deal. Solomon Brothers is under investigation by the Treasury Department, the Federal Reserve, the SEC, and the Justice Department. But more important than the fate of the firm itself is the impact their actions could have on the public trust and on the credibility of the American market worldwide. The company owed $150 billion. It owed more money than any other private company in the United States at the time. And that night, I met with the man that ran the Federal Reserve of New York, who was the sheriff, in effect. And I said, you know, I've never really owed very much money before. I said, I've got a little mortgage on a house. But $150 billion is a little staggering. And I was hoping he would say, well, don't worry, Warren. We'll give you a few weeks to breathe. And he, he said to me, prepare for any eventuality. Treasury Department announced that it had suspended Solomon Brothers from participating in the auction of new issues. It was one more jolt for a scandal-scarred Wall Street. The Fed was in effect saying, you're an evil force and we don't want you trading our bonds. It was a huge turning point for Warren. And he believed that at that particular point, his reputation was on the line. Warren had 24 hours to make up his mind as whether he was going to go forward or just bow out. And I think at that point, Solomon Brothers could have gone into bankruptcy. And Warren stepped up and took responsibility. Okay, at, uh, I'm Warren Buffett. I was uh, elected uh, interim chairman of Solomon Inc. Uh, a few hours ago at a board of directors meeting. Why was it necessary for you to step in, and what is your mandate of leadership? I think that it was necessary to step in because I would do whatever was needed to dig out any bit of information about what's happened in the past, and I would do everything I could to make sure that things are exactly right in the future. Was the Buffett, are you satisfied that you were... I had to convince the Treasury that what was done in the past was awful and stupid, and they had every right to be furious at us. But this firm employed 8,000 people, and it was going to go out of business unless they let us continue, basically. Warren believed that there was a too-big-to-fail scenario. The term was not used then, but he believed that Solomon was too big to fail. And if Solomon went down, it would take other important parts of Wall Street with it. 
we had this death knell from the Treasury, so I called the Treasury. Nick Brady was the secretary. You know, I'm pleading for my life, and I'm sure my voice was cracking and everything else. I said, Nick, this is the most important day of my life. And then I really did feel that it was going to be a colossal disaster. He wasn't sure I was right at all. In fact, he probably thought I was wrong, but he knew that I felt what I was saying. So the Treasury modified its order, and in effect, of course, it was quite an endorsement. It was huge. <laughs> it saved Selma. Nick Brady went with Warren because he trusted him. It shows how having a good reputation is really helpful in life. I thank you for the opportunity to appear before this subcommittee. I would like to start by apologizing for the acts that have brought us here. The nation has a right to expect its rules and laws to be obeyed. But I also have asked every Solomon employee to be his or her own compliance officer. After they first obey all rules, I then want employees to ask themselves whether they are willing to have any contemplated act appear the next day on the front page of their local paper to be read by their spouses, children, and friends if they follow this test, they need not fear my other message to them. Lose money for the firm, and I will be understanding. Lose a shred of reputation for the firm, and I will be ruthless. I welcome your questions.